So it's 1961. Elvis has been back from the army for over a year, and he's uh, he's put out uh, two secular albums. Um, Elvis is back in something for everybody, uh, with full of pop music and and rhythm and blues and all kinds of uh, different genres. Um, and GI Blues was a was a smash hit, and Flaming Star and Wild in the Country were not. So uh, so they lined him up in a movie with. A uh, ton of girls in an exotic location, and the result was the uh, was the fourteenth album uh, in the album's collection, Blue Hawaii. Uh, Blue Hawaii is one of Elvis's best-selling albums ever, ever made uh, that that he ever produced, um, and for good reason. And and that one, the the one good reason is can't help falling in love. Um, we'll just get the that right out of the way. That's the one song everybody knows, everybody loves. There's a gazillion and a half covers of teenage girls doing uh, their version of Gandalf Falling in Love on YouTube. Um, and I've heard them all because they always post them in, in uh, the, the Elvis subreddit um, on Reddit. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the neat thing about this album is that even though it... and, and the album... Uh, the movie itself falls into the formula of the stereotypical Elvis movie because it, but because it was so early in the process, um, the formula really hadn't been established yet. Um, this was kind of the one that really nailed down what that formula was going to be. But it does it so well that uh, uh, you can't really hold it against it. Um, and that's something I'll talk about in the in the movie review for for uh, Blue Hawaii. But that's uh, the same thing with the soundtrack. Um, Elvis is engaged, uh, especially because it's a different style for him. Everything is Hawaiian-themed, um, even the songs that aren't really Hawaiian-themed necessarily lyrically end up uh, getting the Hawaiian treatment. Um, like Moonlight Swim it could be just a general pop song, but with the steel guitars and everything, it ends up sounding like a Hawaiian song. Um, uh, the, probably my, my favorite song on this one is, is actually, um, uh, his version of, uh, No More, which was, um, originally, a, I want to say an Italian song. Um, I'll have more information on that when I get around to reviewing the movie. Um, and actually going through this track by track, because almost all these are included in the movie. And by the way, a lot of these appeared in, um, Lilo and Stitch because that was also set in Hawaii um, when that came out in 2002. And there's this factoid going around on the internet um, that I've seen several times that says that uh, Lilo and Stitch had more Elvis songs than, than one of Elvis's movies. Um, and uh, apparently whoever came up with that little factoid has never actually seen Blue Hawaii because this thing has 14 songs on it and every single one of them is in the movie. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, but uh, I, th this, much like King Creole, uh, is a concept album, and uh, you can listen to this completely set apart from the movie, and even though there's a few songs that you can kind of hedge at, like um, um, uh, uh, Ito Eats or Slice and Sand, um, you can kind of take them or leave them. Um, they fit better into the movie than they do on the album, but... Uh, but they don't bother you as much because they're all within the theme. This is one of the the best themed movie albums um, that Elvis did. Um, there's a reason why it's one of the best selling ones. Um, so if you haven't heard it yet, I definitely recommend it. Elvis's um, voice had not been stronger at this point, especially on songs like Blue Hawaii and the Hawaiian Wedding Song. Um, which he did, he did revisit some of the songs from this in the Aloha from Hawaii special in 1974, uh, and it just, it, uh, 1973, excuse me. Um, and, and while they were good, they weren't quite as, as good as they were on, on the original. Um, but uh, it's good. It's a really good album. I recommend it.